Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Train Sim World 2. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newly released Clinchfield Railroad Route and we're going to be going through the tutorials for the uh, F7 and SD40. Uh, so, as you can see, I've already done the F7 introduction and this is like my fourth time recording this um, tutorial. Uh, the reason being is there is a bug with the automatic brake system. And when I recorded it a couple of times through before, I could not figure it out. And it took me one trip to the um, uh, Dovetail Games YouTube channel um, and watch the launch day stream uh, to find out the fix is very easy <laughs> and apparently this bug only exists in this uh, training module so uh, I'm gonna go through the F7 and the SD40 intros and this is gonna be like a pre-patch pre-bug fix video for those who are trying to figure out why you can't get the F7's automatic brakes to work uh, correctly so with that we're gonna go through both of those uh, get a feel for the F7 and the SD40 and uh, Hopefully you guys will understand a little bit better on how to operate these locomotives. Welcome to engineer training. Here you'll be taken through the operation of a classic electromotive division F7 diesel electric locomotive. During this brief introduction, we will go through the critical locomotive controls and freight operations. When you're ready, climb aboard to get started. Yes, the lovely F7. Um, ooh, as an SD40 screams by. Three units on that one. God, I, I can't wait to get into the SD40s, to be honest with you. I'm interested to see how the insides uh, of that cab looks. And yeah, um, prior to me trying to figure out the F7 here, I tried to stay away from watching any videos in the route because uh, I simply just wanted to learn the route uh, myself. And... Um, uh, I don't know, just get into it without seeing anything prior. But obviously I had to look into it to figure out why this locomotive was bugging out. <laughs> and again, I believe when watching Matt Pedelson on the Train Simulator YouTube, uh, when he was doing the launch day stream, he said that this only it's only affected in this um, scenario. But it is also a great practice to help set up other locomotives uh, as well. Uh, but anyways, we'll get, in, get uh, into the F7A unit here. It's almost the 800 <laughs> that um, CSX recently restored. But uh, let's go ahead and get into the cab. We'll open up the cab door here. Uh, oh, I guess I didn't hit it. Cab door? Cab door? Cab door? Oops. We broke it already. Jeez Louise, what's wrong with the <laughs> buttons today? Take a seat in the engineer's position. This is where you'll be spending most of your time. It's awesome also hearing Matt Pedelson as the uh, tutorial guide here. The fuel pump will need to be closed to allow fuel to reach the locomotive. Alright, fuel pump. Oh, I need to not do this on controller. That I, <laughs> It's too sensitive. They switched you back to the immersion controls, which are okay, but... Oh, that's the wrong one. Um, but I... Uh, the engine is currently it shut down you. and will need to be started before progressing. Press and hold the engine start button to activate. I use the classic controls, um, so the immersion controls get it uh, a little wonky because they're at the default sensitivity settings. There we go, 10 seconds on that. The isolation valve is currently in the start position. Use the indicated control to set the isolation valve to the run position. There we go, we're at run. The rotor valve allows the operator to set the brake mode to match the required operation of the locomotive. For the lead locomotive of a long train, use the freight setting. For the lead locomotive of a shorter train, use the passenger setting. If the locomotive is a trailing locomotive, use the appropriate freight or passenger lap setting. If running as a light locomotive, the passenger setting is recommended for rapid brake response. So this is the first time I'll make a comment, because everything we've gone through is fairly self-explanatory. Usually when you set up a loco first, you put on the control and fuel pump, and actually you do generator field and engine run. Um, but for this particular locomotive, you put the control and fuel pump first, then you do engine start, 
isolation valve to run, uh, but that is off of a cold start as well. Um, but this is very similar to many of the brake settings that we've used. So you, we still have our brake cutout valve in and out, and I'll explain that a little bit later, but you have the rotar valve, um, and like I said, this just controls brake flow uh, or airflow through the brake. So like Matt mentioned just now, freight lap and passenger lap is if you're a trailing locomotive. Um, so it's not being directly controlled by this loco. If you put the passenger, I think the uh, like the air pressure and brake responses are a little bit quicker. And since we're usually doing freight stuff, we're sticking that to freight, uh, and that means we're being we're controlling the brakes uh, via this locomotive. The reverser determines the direction of travel. So forward on the reverser. The transition lever is used to control the flow of the electrical current to the traction motors which is set based on the movement the locomotive is currently performing. As we are performing switching duties around a yard, we will need to set the control to series parallel shunt. Do this now by using the indicated lever. The unit selector is used by the engineer to specify how many locomotives are in the current lash-up. Use the indicated lever to set the number of locomotives in this So formation. we have two, so we'll switch that to two. The generator field switch will need to be set. Use the indicated switch to activate the generator field now. And yeah, highlighting over the particular things does, uh, the knobs actually does um, work, which is pretty cool. Okay, locomotive set up, I know we have to release the independent brakes. For this introduction, we will be performing switching duties and handling the loading of hoppers. So before we do that... You are now ready for service. Using the throttle, apply a small amount of power to get moving. Before we get going, we're going to put that in full application, do, doing exactly what Matt did in the in the stream. So, he doesn't mention anything about the brake cutout valve in this. You notice how it's set to cut in, which is correct. We should be set in cut in, because we are the main main controlling unit in this but we have to get out of this cab oh oh lag hello oh oh that's because i got the cursor there we go oh how do i get rid of that no there we go okay jeez um i was glitching out so we do need to get back on because we have to go into the second locomotive because the cutout valve in this if we go there should be set to end so let's go to this locomotive. And if we look down here, sure enough, it's set to in. So we need to change that to out, which now makes this the trailing locomotive. And like I said, the rotary, or rot, rotator valve <laughs> is set to freight lap. That's correct. Automatic brake running. This has some independent brake. I don't know why, but I'm not gonna adjust that. Um, so now we should be fine step out of the second unit which should really just be a B unit. I don't know why it's an A unit in this scenario. It would make way more sense if it was an A unit or a B. <laughs> make more sense if it was a B unit. Not that much sense that it's an A unit. Um, but regardless, we're going to ignore that. So now we shouldn't have any issues with the automatic brake. So the bug was that that valve back there was set to in and if you tried to use the automatic brake in this locomotive, it wouldn't do anything. Uh, so now should be fine. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and put the... Oh, yep, I'm in immersion control still. Uh, so we're in uh, forward. Let's go ahead and put it in a couple notches. Yeah, you notice how we put it in... Um, put put the... We put in a notch two there. The transition lever went to series parallel. I don't know why. I don't know if that's also a glitch in the scenario too, but... I'm just going to completely ignore that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so now the automatic brake should work. That, so if anyone's been having issues with this scenario, that's the main reason there. It's because the cutout valve um, in the other locomotive Posting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed. was set to in instead of out. So with that, we should stop fine. <laughs> uh, and you will see why we need the automatic brake here in a bit. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, this is, I, like I said, I, I really love, uh, this, this route, uh, I, I hadn't even played it in 
uh, TS 2021, actually. I don't even own it in that sim. Um, but when I heard it was going to come out to Train Sim World, I knew I had to hold <laughs> hold my money and put it on um, and get the route on, on TSW 2, just because this this sim is, is phenomenal. Um, oh, I was supposed to put it idle, I see. Keeping to speed limits is important. If you begin over speeding, apply a small amount of brake by moving the handle into the braking range. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's such a gorgeous route. Um, and the detail again, I, I, I'm very biased towards Train Sim World too. Um, just the detail level is phenomenal. I really enjoy it. Um, if anything, I'd love for Dovetail Games to stop support on TS 2021. There's so many bugs and glitches on that, and there's so many good things coming out of this sim. Uh, but yeah, now the brakes should work. Yeah, you can see, so out of our gauges in the bottom, you can see BC for brake cylinder. It's There's numbers now for it. Um, oops, I need to put that in service. There we go. Put it in lap. So it runs just like that Caltrain FP40. Is it FP40? This yard features both manual and automatic switches. The manual switches will I need to be set called. on foot before departing. Climb down now and make sure the switches are set to the correct position. I forget what the Caltrain locomotive is, but it's similar to that. It's only got a service lap and the hoppers like are minimal. You will need to approach them slowly to safely couple and avoid a potential derail. Like a minimal brake setting to it. Um, but yeah, it's a simple automatic system, which I really like. Okay, so let's reduce automatic brakes. Which one's bell? No, we don't have bell. We have horn. Horn is great. It's <laughs> so good. I never thought I'd enjoy an F7 so much. That's the other thing I was going to mention, too, besides not owning this route on TS2021, is that I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of historic rats and train sims. I'm not too sure why. Um, I don't mind things like steam locomotives um, in the sims, but I'm t the type that if you're gonna put steam locomotives in, you put historic logos in, that they're still ran in the modern era. Um, especially since there's so many societies and organizations that preserve um, these locomotives and run them on modern, you know, excursion lines and things like that. Um, so, I don't necessarily want an entirely historic route, um, but I don't know, that's just me, I'm, it's just what I like to see out of a sim. I, I like to see historic stuff being used in model railroads, I think. Uh, I think there's a little bit more enjoyment in that than there is in the sim world, but I don't know, this might change my mind if I play more of this Clinchfield route. There's a proper name for this route, I feel like, I just keep calling it Clinchfield. Here we go. Oof, we were right, right there. With the hoppers successfully coupled, your next task is to bring the cut of cars over to the tipple to begin the loading process. When loading hoppers, you need to keep to a slow and controlled speed to allow the loader to correctly and safely load the hoppers. Apply a small amount of power to start moving and then adjust the throttle back to the idle position once you're traveling at no more than three miles per hour. So I got here into the cold tipple. Probably just use independent brake here. Maybe. Actually, we could test the automatic brake. Oh, that's throttle. Oh, yeah. That works. Works really well. <laughs> Yeah, when you first do the scenario and you realize that, uh, the automatic brakes don't work, you're like, aw, crap. <laughs> Which is usually how it goes. Okay, I'll have to admit it, the immersion controls aren't so bad. I, I try to stay away from them because I like the classic one. Um, I guess they're not too bad. Especially if you want to be on all controller, if you don't want to use a keyboard. I have noticed, and you'll see it here, especially since I use my mouse to get the loco set up, is that it gets the game gets very glitchy when you go between a controller and a mouse or a controller and keyboard. It's very bizarre. Uh, I'm not too sure why it's like that, but um, 
Yeah, so I might try to stick with the immersion controls a little bit more. And it reduces sensitivity, but I like how you can zoom in and out. But I think there's simple features like the bell. Like bells and how you operate, like how to open and close doors and passenger trains. And it's the only thing where the immersion controls is weird because I don't, the mapping of that's bizarre. Okay, come on, we got a bit of a grade. I can't put it a notch. One, apparently. I think the only way you can zoom is on a mouse if you don't have it set to the immersion controls. So we'll see. Maybe I'll get used to the immersion controls after this. There we go. Nice job. The hoppers are now loaded. Your final task is to couple this cut of cars to the waiting train. Cool. So I have to get this switch set over here. Now I might try to go into the other locomotive. Oh, 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 there you go. I'm sure I'm trying to remember what I need to do. You will need to contact the dispatcher before you can leave the yard. Contact the dispatcher and ensure you're given clear... Actually, come to think about it, we're going to need this front loco. So, I'll go back up here, close the door to this, get back in. Contact dispatcher by holding B. Yeah, so there's like shortcuts like that I need to get familiar with as well. The reversers, the up and down on the D-pad. Um, yeah, oh, I'll we'll see. Maybe I'll get used to it. All right, let's get rid of the automatic brake. Because I don't know what bell is. I don't know what A is. Well, a usually selects things. If I hold B again. Okay, yeah, that's that. Oh, no, Y gets that. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, let's go on. I do like you can just click one button to change between cameras, but then I like some of the classic camera modes as well. Sides with the second unit here. And the detail of this thing, I mean, for, especially for a historic locomotive, I mean, oh, this is, <laughs> this is pretty good. It looks pretty good. And the technology, too, I mean, like I said, there's technology in this thing that's over 50 years old, and it's just, uh, just awesome to, oh my gosh, oh my god, I just want gauge lights. I just want gauge lights! This, that's so sensitive. Um, and, you know, so much tech, you know, old technology that's still being used today as well. A lot of everything here is still being used, so. It's pretty cool to see a lot of that. Oh. Alright, we can go back out the side of the cab. We'll see what we're doing here. Yeah, and these aren't bad. I don't mind the weathered look at these things as well. I do wish it was more... I, I, I thought there were clean versions of these too, so it might be randomly given to the player if it's going to be clean or if it's going to be um, dirty or worn out. I'm not too sure. Um, but... First service works pretty well. It's not horrible, it could be a little bit, uh, a little bit better. Ooh, do be speeding a little bit. Break pressure up. Put in service. So you put in service to take out some of the, pre you know, apply some of the brakes. You put in lap to, um, hold that. First service is kind of just a little bit. 
again. First service holds it as well. It was, uh, Stop on it. Ooh, this is perfect. Maybe. Oh. Will I accept it? Yes, it accepted it. Thank God. Okay, so the game is going through and switching some of these. And we have some couplers to hoppers a couple up to ahead of us. Put some power before we take off the brakes. Said, oh my gosh, we're rolling back. <laughs> Notch four, there we go. We're shunting these through. Yeah, scenery is gorgeous. Um, I'm still thinking places it lacks detail. Actually, I think some of those trees over there are floating, which is. A small detail that I feel should, shouldn't be missed. I wouldn't. <laughs> I would try my hardest to make sure I fix things like that. Like there's a tree in the river over there. Um, there's small things like that. And that could have been cleaned up, but, you know, I'm not going to complain. A first person train sim where you can walk around and do stuff is uh, pretty good. We have to deny no route available. Oh, I don't think we're close to that signal aspect in 0.9 miles. Um, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a good route, and I know there's more third-party third, third uh, party developers and such that are making routes, especially uh, Cane Creek at Skyhook Games, I believe, is making. Um, that looks, looks pretty promising. I can't wait to get my hands on that route as well. So, getting more American content, which is, which is great. Which is pretty much all I play, sadly. I really do need to get into the European routes and routes around the, the world more. Anytime I can do an American route, oh, it's awesome. Okay, this I think we're gonna have to go out the cab just so we can see. Because once again, that marker for coupling to our hoppers and 400 yards or so is in relation to our, where we are sitting in the cab. It's not in relation to uh, coupler to coupler, which is still something I wish was was looked into, um, especially since there's no co-op multiplayer or anything like that yet. Um, so you have another ex set of set of hands and eyes to tell you, hey, how close am I, am I getting to these hoppers or these other rail cars I need to connect up to? We're actually being slowed down fairly well by the 0.5% grade we're at. And really just kind of coasting up to it. Put a little bit more, more throttle into it. Detail of the tracks I will in a few net is pretty good also. I just realized that there's a lot of optimized uh, things that they've done to this route. Okay, couple up nice and gently to these is another coal unit. There, it's a very short one too. There's a caboose already. Come on, almost there. Almost there. We're not sure four. We're not moving anywhere. There we go. Come on, nice and easy. And we'll cut it off there. Add some brake. Nice. Nice, easy shunt. 
With the hoppers now coupled, you can uncouple the locomotive from the train. Use the cut bar on the rear it's hopper on to uncouple the, the hoppers from this locomotive. Ah, uh, we're rolling. Oops, oops. We gotta run away. We gotta run away. We gotta run away. And put some independent in there. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Stop. Whew, okay. I, I did that already, too. That was... <laughs> okay, there we go. And couple that. That was... That was scary. Yeah. Good job. That is all of the tasks oh. that have been assigned to you for now. We gotta, of course, bring, bring the locomotive back. back to the yard for use oh, later in the day. Okay. Oh, that's the other thing, too. When you're switching through brake settings, you can also switch to the transition setting as well, which is super nice. It's nice how they incorporated that. I think that's for both the immersion control and the um, classic mode as well. So, yeah, we will bring this loco back. Can I do proceed at restricted speed? Good. Okay, I have to hold B there. So I get past the signal. And yeah, that was the F7 tutorial. Almost done. I know we still have to do the SD40. These scenarios are taking much longer than I, I thought they were going to be. Yeah, the horn's not too bad. I think it could be cleaned up a little bit more. Like boosted too much or something weird. I don't know what's, what's up with that. Um, yeah, it's very pretty, very scenic as well. It's great livery too. I feel like CSX should. I know there's a there's an SD40-3. I think that's an old Clinchfield livery. Um, cool to see if a few more modern locos with a clinch field scheme and I wouldn't mind if CSX did some heritage stuff as well. It'd be awesome to see like a seaboard special, uh, clinch field special, CNO, oh man, a CNO livery on a CSX loco would be pretty neat. And I might do that. I still need to get into the paint stuff here on the sim. Uh, I might, especially with the F unit here, I might try to make uh, some modern liveries on it, do some like C and L liveries. I think that would look pretty cool. Um, have some fun with it. Uh, so yeah, so the biggest thing in this scenario was the the brakes um, not set correctly in the second unit. So again, just make sure you go over to the second unit, make sure that the brakes are set to. Um, cut out instead of cut in. Uh, it's just like running American Locos. It's, it's kind of the same same situation. Um, and I think it's not like that for any other scenarios, but some timetables it might require you to go to the other Locos and set them up correctly. Um, so with that, looks like we're going to stop right on target. Good work. That concludes all of the basics of operating this locomotive. Welcome to Engineer Training. Here you'll be taken through the operation of an Electromotive Division SD40 diesel electric locomotive. During this brief introduction, we will go through the critical locomotive controls and refueling of the locomotive. When you're ready, climb aboard to get started. Okay, looks like we're in another location on the route. Oh, there's a turntable. Oh my gosh. There's like water towers over there. I think those are water towers or fueling towers. Who knows what they may be. I didn't realize there was a turntable on this route. Very cool. Um, all right, so it's an SD40. It's not an SD40-2. I don't know the history between the variations of it. I don't know if there's an SD40-1. I think it was just the SD40 and SD40-2. Um, so yeah, I don't know the history of it, but I am expecting the inside of this locomotive to look different than the modern, uh, SD40-2s. Um, yeah, it's got a little bit different of a look to it. Not too bad, though. I feel like most modern, uh, uh SD40-2s kind of look like this. I know CSX usually runs their 
front headlights right where the clinch field lettering is uh, and then there's usually ditch lights and you tell you notice that there's no ditch lights here um, so this was way before the time when it was standardized to have a triangle pattern on the light so you have two ditch lights uh, and a headlight because i think all american locomotives are required to have that um, so same thing open this up take a seat in the engineer's position this is where you'll be spending most of your time Ooh, somewhat simplified. Uh, most things still seem the same, but I think where I see the difference is when we sit down. Oh yeah, <laughs> I see the differences already. The main circuit breaker is used to allow power to the locomotive. Use the indicated control to set it to the closed position. Okay, I'm going to switch to the mouse here. It's going to lag up a bit. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Get out of the seat. So we have to set the main breaker to closed. Okay. So set the isolation switch to start, stop, isolate. The engine will first need to be primed to start the locomotive. Use the indicated switch and hold it in the prime position for 10 seconds. Ah, so this controls up here instead of uh, within the engine bay as well. So 10 seconds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I counted a bit too quick. There we go. Now that the engine has been primed, it's time to start it up. Using the same switch as before, move it into the start position and hold it there for five seconds to start the engine. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. I had some doubts there for a second. Oh, it's we started it, right? Is it glitching out now? Okay, I guess I had to hold it a little bit longer. With the engine now running, set the isolation switch to the run position. Run, good. Nice work. The locomotive is now ready for operation. This locomotive has three brake systems. The automatic brake controls the brakes on the locomotive and all the cars in the consist. The independent brake is used to control only the locomotive's brakes and is primarily used when running light. The dynamic brake is used to help control the train's speed when operating on mainline and branchline grades. As we are running light loco, we will use the independent brake to control our speed. Now move the automatic brake lever into the release position. The cutoff valve will need to be set to the required position. Do this now by moving the cutoff valve and setting it to freight. So, again, um, basic modern American loco stuff here. Cut out, we're changing that to freight because we're uh, heading this. The MU2A valve must also be set up to the required position. Move the indicated switch and set it to lead or dead. And the MU2A valve uh, is very similar to the Rotar valve in the F7. That's probably the best way to explain what that valve is in the modern uh, sense. So yeah, we gonna change that to lead or dead. Activate the auxiliary systems as indicated. So we have, oh, that changes that. Oh, that changes that. Ah, oh, yeah, okay, that's where the immersion controls are. Eh. Uh, engine run, generate on, control fuel pump. Insert for reverse handle down there, there we go. The reverser is used to determine the direction of travel. Forward. The selector lever uh, allows you to move between power and dynamic braking modes. The B setting allows the throttle handle to control the dynamic brake, and the 1 setting allows it to apply power. Set the selector lever to 1 now. Wow, so this is like the transitioned one uh, valve. So 1. Oh. With this introduction, we will be moving this locomotive oh. over to the fuel racks to refuel. This yard features manual switches which will need to be set on foot before departing. Climb down now and make sure the switches are set to the correct position. Are you telling me I have to walk all the way over there? <sighs> F 
fine. Let's get out and walk out. So interesting. It is, you know, there. it's still different compared to the modern SD4-2s. Um, a lot of it being um, controls that are simplified. And again, we don't have that selector switch or this, the, the transition switch, partly because most things now operate on different... Um, you know, we've simplified the electrical systems and them to just be controlled by, you know, whatever task we're, we're doing in the locomotive. So we set this one, because I could have done this on the map, but it's fine. Okay. This locomotive is now ready for service. Use the throttle and apply a small amount of power to get Yeah, moving. yeah, yeah, you forgot the step where we had to walk all the way back and get our exercise for the day. Goodness, I totally didn't overdose on bacon cheeseburgers from Wendy's, okay? I swear. By the way, kudos to Matt. I think I've already said it as well. Kudos to Matt for doing the tutorials. I've watched. I've been watching Matt on his Twitch for a very long time, and uh, I think before I even knew he worked with Dovetail Games. And uh, yeah, he's doing a very good job with these tutorials. I hope he does more of them because they're very good. I will right, we'll put the reverser in throttle. Oh, it's a classic horn. Classic, well, I don't know if you can really call it a K5 LLA, but I don't think that's, ooh, I don't think that's set. Um, I don't think that's very realistic to the time era. <laughs> Posting is a method used to coast. Keeping to speed limits is important. Yeah. If you begin speeding, apply a small amount of brake by moving the handle into the braking range. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then we go Dante. So we're in Dante now. Try to like some of these yards and such. So we have to stop here. So I think we're reversing to where the fueling depots are. Ooh, let's stop. Very good. No. Nope. Then accept that. But yeah, it's very. You can just tell, especially the. Uh, like the amps as well. Yeah, it's in DC. The refueling not AC. point is behind us. Make sure that the switches are set to the correct position, and then reverse the locomotive to the fuel rack. Okay. Okay. Oh, we also need to remember to turn on some lights as well. That's one tutorial light. It's kind of obvious, but I wish I mentioned as well. So, fuel. Let me just go for, like further than we need it to be. Oh, I'm switching to that one. And switch that. A little bit grassy over here. Right, and that should be set up there. Cool. Okay. Go on back. Yeah, and I'd like to see. And I, I talked about how I, I wasn't that big of a fan in regards to uh, like like historic routes. If they can make a modernized version of this, that'd be awesome. You know, and run. Yeah. I mean, you can probably go into the scenario editor and. Uh, get a modern CSX consists running, but especially since most of the scenery takes place in historical times, and a lot of the rails are probably not the same today. So I'm getting the hang of the immersion controls, but it's still a bit awkward at first. Any, any of those bells? No, that doesn't control the bell. Yeah, the immersion, I think some of the immersion controls are limited in this scenario. Yeah, that's such a modern CSX horn for an SD 40-2 or a GP38-2 or an SD4 or a GP40. Pull on in, do some fuel.
Let's see. Yeah, that's such an old style gauge. For the amps. And here's our fuel pump. A little tiny fuel pump right in the middle of the yard. There we go. With the locomotive now positioned next to the fuel rack, you will need to prepare the locomotive prepare the for lock. refueling. Oh. To begin, open the fuel cap to allow access to the locomotive uh -oh. fuel tank. Stuck here. Oh, perfect. Okay, cool. Fuel cap. Now, take hold of the fuel hose and then insert it into the fuel tank. Oh! Oh, as soon as you run. Uh, am I not close enough? Ah, uh, I'm not close enough. Why do you do this? No, I'm not even close enough for it. Gosh darn it. Get me on. Get me on! No! You've got to be kidding me right now. <laughs> no, it won't let me get on. Does it let me go back on? Yes, okay. Goodness gracious. Get me back in this stinking thing. I'm going to notch eight to get this thing. There we go. I hope that was close enough. I hope that was close enough. I can't believe I did that. I can't believe that. <laughs> and so it's a safety thing if that cap is off, then it doesn't go. Okay, please tell me this reaches. Thank you. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh With my god. inserted into the tank, you can begin yeah. with your... Uh, hose has seen better days. Truly seen better days. Oh, yeah, but you can see it go up in the gauge. Yep. Nice work. The locomotive is now fully fueled and ready for service. Return the hose back to the fuel rack yep. and reattach yep. the fuel yep. cap yep. to finish there the job. Are. What? <laughs> Good work. That concludes all of the basics of operating and refueling nice. this locomotive. Okay, we made it through it. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. I got a gold star for that, which which is all that matters. So yeah, that was the intro for both locomotives. Uh, I'm really excited for this route, and we'll definitely be doing uh, some scenarios uh, on on here. For now, though, that's going to be it for this video on both the S7 tutorial and the SD40 tutorials. If you guys are still struggling with uh, how to operate the locomotives, do be sure to put your questions in the comments below, and I'll try my best to answer them for you and let me know what you want to see uh, out of the Clinchfield route. For now, though, that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.